Hello, hello. Good morning. Let me check my audio. Yes, of course I need to change my audio. There we go. I think it should be working now. Hello. How's it going? Welcome. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. It's been an interesting morning so far. How's it going? Hi, Stephanie. Good morning. How's it going? Hi, Shakti. How are you today, love? Hi, Keisha. Hi, Adriana. Jessica, Lisa, welcome. Come on in. How's it going? Hi, Cara. Lori is here. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Chantal. Hi, David. I was just playing with your meteorites you gave me, David. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You guys are so sweet. So I had a guest this morning, but my guest is missing. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock in the morning. She's on the West Coast, so I imagine she might still be uh, sleeping. <laughs> Maybe it was a bit too early for her. She may still join. My guest was supposed to be Lori Lothian today. We were going to talk about the eclipse. She's a professional astrologist on um, lunatic astrology. But like I said, it's 7 o'clock her, her time this morning. And I think that she might have missed the alarm <laughs> or something. So you guys get me today. Hello. Nice, David. You're going to make some organite. Fantastic. Good morning, Michelle. Hi, Agata. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Nora. Hi, Dolly. Hi, Daniela. Hi, Chantal. Hi, Lynn. So we'll see what happens. She still got the link. She may join us. <laughs> she may wake up and go, oh, shit. <laughs> and then come join us after. But either way, I just wanted to hang out with you guys this morning. How are you all feeling with this crazy energy? Good morning, Erin. What am I wearing around my neck? Well. This is one of my favorite uh, Merlinite pieces. Do you guys know what Merlinite is? Merlinite is it's technically called dendritic agate, and it's my favorite crystal. So I'm wearing some. I'm wearing a lot of Merlinite today. This is also Merlinite. It's three different types of crystals, all kind of blended in one, and each kind, each piece of Merlinite is unique. Uh, so, like all of us, <laughs> you'll never find a piece that's identical. So I, I absolutely love it. And it looks kind of like an eclipse in a way. It looks kind of like a little portal. So that's why I put it on. I'm going to start making jewelry. I've been looking into uh, making like Kabuchan jewelry and, and lining it with silver and all that, like these ones are. So because I'd like to make some Merlinite and some Organite, some uh, Organite that's kind of like this too. So yeah, my Wonder Woman braces. Yes, that's what they are. We're blocking all the bad juju today. Although, you know, I don't feel I feel really good. How are you guys feeling? I feel amazing today. <laughs> Lori says she's probably trying to grab some coffee. <laughs> yes, yes, that's probably what's going on right now. I honestly have no idea. I have not heard a word. So I imagine sleep is <laughs> what's going on right now with my guest. But yeah, we are um we're all having a pretty good morning so far, right? I woke up feeling amazing too, Adriana. That's wonderful to hear, by the way. So, yeah, hopefully we'll all just get through this with no problems. <laughs> I feel amazing today. I feel uplifted and excited. And there's all kinds of wonderful things that are coming. And da, da, da. So, let's check the Schumann and... Uh, Check the, the flares and see what's going on there. Oh, yeah, we've had some solar activity. It's actually kind of quiet right now. We've still got some of those down spikes, if you see. But it's actually been kind of quiet, which is interesting. Let's see what the Schumann's been doing. Oh, yeah, the Schumann is also quiet. There is nothing going on with the Schumann, any, or at least the one I'm looking at. Interesting. So, 
Perfect timing, Christopher. Christopher has been working diligently to change the name of our website. Um, so I may, may as well talk about that for a minute until then we can start talking about the eclipse. So as many of you know, about every eight weeks or so, especially around the pagan Sabbaths, I like to partake of the fungal variety. I like fungus. What can I say? So I, <laughs> I took some the other day and my guides gave me some insight and they basically said that, um, there's certain things I should be doing, certain energies I need to change. One of the things they talked about was cannabis, but we've already talked about that. <laughs> now I need to, to simmer down a little bit with it. But one of the interesting things that um, we were talking about is how names carry certain energy. And they said that I should change the name of the website. And I'm so glad that Christopher and Daniela are <laughs> so understanding about my uh, my whims and my my following of my intuition because they were very supportive about this they're like okay you gotta change the name all right let's do it so <laughs> i love you christopher and daniela thank you so much um so i uh it's a long story but um i had quite an experience where i was learning about the the goddess astara and Astara, obviously, you know, she's part of this whole Easter pagan ritual that we do. Um, and the name Astara would not leave my subconscious. I just kept thinking about it over and over again. So it's spelled O-S-T-A-R-A. -A. Um, so the new name that we have chosen to, for Divinate is Astara. We're going to call it the Astara Collective. We're going to call it the A-S. T. So basically A star A. So A-S-T-A-R-A. -A. Um, and Christopher has made a beautiful logo for us. Thank you, Christopher. Um, oh, there's the sign that Christopher made. There we go. So Divinate is now going to be changed to Astara Metaphysics. It's going to be called the Astara Community um, that we are going to be changing everything over today so we are we came up with the name we've been working on it the last week it is it is greek for star <laughs> but it is named after you know the goddess of stara and so um yeah it's gonna have a, a new feel to it a new vibe because we're we we did kind of model it after the whole keen thing and we were trying to kind of be competitive with keen but I think we're trying to make this more into a metaphysical school rather than just uh, a metaphysical website. We, like, we actually want to turn this into um, a place where we have like an academy in person, just like with spirit release therapy. Uh, because, and, and many of you know that spirit release therapy, the logo for spirit release therapy um, is wings and a sword. So a winged sword. So Christopher... Um, who is so wonderful, helped me to visualize what I had in my head because they chose a sword with wings. So we decided that we were going to use a shield. Um, and so that is why, if you guys look, now we have... Doo -doo. There we go. Is it working? There it is. So there's the new logo. Thank you, Christopher, for making such a beautiful logo. And that is why we have the star there. The star is our shield of protection. Because that's what we're that's what we're manifesting for each other. We are going to basically create a oh, here we go. Thank you, Danielle. Mighty Networks will be the Astara community, and the website is a star directory where your practitioner listings are. So thank you, Christopher, for redoing the logo and making it look beautiful. And thank you for changing the website and working your butt off for the last week or so. <laughs> He's been scrambling to help me catch up with all of this stuff. So Christopher, you're just amazing. And um, he's also helped me to set up. I have an astral projection class that I will be teaching. There's 144 people watching right now. I love it. So... <laughs> um, so yeah, we are very excited about this name change because I feel like it's going to bring in a whole lot of new energy that is uh, really needed right now. So thank you, Christopher, for working your butt off. And thank you for also getting, hold on, where's my link? I will be teaching a class on astral projection. Um, my astral projection class will be on the 14th. 
Uh, very, very grateful to Jono and Andy because Jono I'm, um, and I, Jono and I, I meant to say Chen and Andy, sorry, my brain is not working today. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to find the link here. Christopher, do you mind dropping me the link really quick for the class on the 14th? I'm scrolling back. You and I talk way too much, Christopher. I have, I have 50 messages to scroll through right now. Oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. I got it. Never mind. I have it. So I'm going to be teaching a class on the 14th. It's going to be about astral projection. I have some new information from Chen that I'll be delivering into that class. So it's nice when you work with soul guides, you can get extra information about whatever subject you want. And so here we go. That's my plan as I'm going to teach you guys some, some new things about astral projection that even I didn't know, thanks to uh, the soul guides. So if you guys look, Christopher has been working his butt off, changing all the stuff on Divinate into a star now. So make sure that you guys go in your names. All of your stuff is going to be the same. We're just changing the name of the actual website. So for those of you that have like a, a practitioner directory on there, um, I just saw Rachel Chamnus's message. Rachel, are you still watching, honey? Because if you've got a channeled message, you want to, where is she? I'm going to message her. Rachel. You still here? So she is. And if you want to, you are, I'm going to send you a link. Do you want to join me, love, since my guest didn't show up? You want to come on? <laughs> Do you want to come and say hi? <laughs> Do you want to give, deliver a message for the collective? Just a, a, a little quickie? <laughs> if you do, let me know. You do? Okay, cool. I'm going to send you a link. Rachel, you can join me. That would be wonderful. I'm still hoping that Lori Lothian is also going to show up. <laughs> but but we could, I would love to. Oh, that's not the right one. Hold on. Hold that thought. I don't know why I didn't copy. Ignore that, Rachel. I'm sending you the right one. There you go, honey. Yeah, you can come join me. And we could talk about the eclipse. Because I would love to have a channeled message about the eclipse today. <laughs> <sighs> that's <laughs> that's fine take your time rachel you can join us whenever you're ready so um <laughs> we're just winging it today you guys as you can tell <laughs> so we can talk a little bit about the eclipse um i have heard that remember what chen said that there's going to be another piece of the veil that is going to be removed today that some of the veil is going to be thinned out and so that'll be fun we'll see what happens there i've been seeing all kinds of weird stuff you know what's funny um aiden and i both saw a shadow move across my house at the same time he was sitting on the couch i was standing in the kitchen asking him a question and i was mid-sentence when i saw something just move in front of me like in between us and it was like a, a black shadow, probably about that big. And I, I just stopped mid-sentence. And Aiden looks at me and he goes, did you see that? And I was like, I don't know. What did you see? <laughs> He's like, I saw a shadow that moved in front of you. And I was like, okay. So we did see the same thing. Good to know. So Aiden and I, we were both very confused as to what the hell was this black shadow that literally just moved in between us. So I, I was astonished because I've been seeing things out of my peripheral. Uh, every time I go to look right at it, it'll disappear. But that was the first time something like passed right in front of my face. And I saw it like clear as day. So I think this is going to get even more exciting. Um, I think that we're going to be seeing a lot more. This is what Chen said was going to happen, is that the veil is going to be getting thinner. So that's what happens with a thinner veil. You start seeing more and more stuff. I didn't think that we would just wake up one day and there'd be, you know, beasties and ghosts everywhere. I just thought that, you know, eventually we might start seeing more. I did not expect it to be this quickly. <laughs> I did not expect that they would be seeing, because people are recording stuff, like ghost stuff everywhere. I'm seeing videos of of ghosts and of entities and stuff being moved and all kinds of stuff that you wouldn't normally see like it's getting very common um doo -doo -doo. 
I have minor surgery scheduled the exact same time of the eclipse. Wasn't trying to arrange that. It just happened. Well, there's a reason for everything, Patrick. So just think positive. Rachel's here. Hello, gorgeous. Hang on. Let me click the button. Do, do, do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I was just at Lowe's, so, you know. Got my mom <laughs> face. <laughs> I think it's working. There we go. Now I can hear properly. It is. I'm just drinking water. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for stepping in this morning. Sure. <laughs> Hunter Gaff is, is still sleeping. <laughs> so thank you. I'm glad you're up early today. What are you I hearing? Am. What's been going on? Well, this is interesting. So I was kind of thinking that, um, you know, at first I was like, well, with the, you know, the eclipse can't, the eclipse can't like control me. <laughs> like, you know, I am not controllable by events. And then I was like, well, um, okay. So now I see that CERN is like, you know, opening their demon portal and <laughs> remember that there are tons of different CERNs too. There's like 10 or 20 of them around the world now. They they have been one building. Here. They're building them all over the place. There's a couple in the States. There's one even in Melbourne, I learned. I didn't even think Australia's got one now too. But if you think about it, they're probably trying to open portals all over the place. I'm sure they are. And uh and then of course NASA's throwing in some crazy uh rockets to the to the moon i mean why why the tegans actually talked about that what they, did they say they, well they talked about the eclipse in fact i'll share that link for you guys the tegans were basically explaining um that the reason they're firing off these rockets is they're trying to lower the frequency even more um they're trying to mess because right now the the eclipse is going to kind of shake up the energies, you know, and they're trying to counteract that as much as possible. So they did explain a little bit about what they they have said is their reasoning behind it, but it really it just makes no sense. Um, so yeah, obviously when they, have, when they give a reason, it's not the real reason. Of course. Well, except for CERN, they're totally like we're opening up demon portals like they're like totally fine with you understanding with their cabal. If they weren't, we would have, the <laughs> thing is, if they weren't already doing this, we would already be in the 5D shift. They're trying to slow things down. Yeah, that's what I figured um, all this stuff is about. And, um, okay, so I was like, well, I'm on the chiropractor, like, at the same time, my chiropractor's totally 5D, so that's cool. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if the universe thinks that's dangerous or doesn't want me to go, I'm sure they'll change it. And I'm supposed to be having my hair done right now. And everything got changed, canceled, moved. And I was like, huh. <laughs> well, then maybe mm -hmm. I should channel and see. So, I was, yeah, I was just a, I was listening to your podcast and thinking, well, I was going to turn this off in a minute and go channel. So, yeah, we can do it together. <laughs> I would love that. It would be fantastic. Okay. <laughs> and hi, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Yeah, Thank I wonder so if they me. don't want us to see. Because also the chemtrails yesterday were insane. And now it's raining. Yeah, they, they didn't want us to see the, <laughs> the eclipse. They're trying to, to block it. Yeah. So, so Aaron's surprised. asking, should we stay inside? The other thing was, then I just kept seeing it pop up in my feed as if my guides were like putting it there. You know, the Native Americans stayed inside. So now I'm like, well, I mean, should we do something? I was just going to sort of ignore it. <laughs> Or like try to be like, hey, I live in the 3D. Let's enjoy the 3D. Like there's definitely not any other place in the universe where the moon and the sun are the exactly same size and can make a 100% solar eclipse. Like that's obviously manufactured. So we should yeah. maybe just enjoy it. But now I'm like, hmm. I'm going to be doing clearings the whole time. I have four hours of clearings oh, today. Okay, I do. Yeah. Time to get so I just, yeah, exactly. I'm going to do clearings. I'm going to close portals. We're going to have a meeting on Wednesday with the SRT uh, crew to basically go through and try and close any of the large portals that were opened. Um, because this is the problem is that, you know, small portals open all the time. They're absolutely everywhere. They're in our electronics. They're in our etheric field. 
They're just randomly in certain areas. You might walk past it and something might try and get you from there. We closed one in a, in a hair salon the other day. Oh, yeah. Where you go in for a haircut thinking, you know what I mean, that that you're just in a quiet place. That, you know what I mean? People are, are doing their thing, but they don't realize it's full of activity because even paranormal activity because there's mirrors everywhere. People are standing there talking about their issues and whatever they're going through. My gosh, that is where you are always just, you know, unburdening yourself to your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, all I keep getting is that this is going to affect the 3D world so deeply and it's going to change everything. And it is a huge part of our ascension. So I can imagine that is why they're trying to do all the things to make it stop. But they know they can't stop it. There's no stopping it. I was heard that the, I was heard, I heard that the, well, because the, the moon is where our artificial 3D matrix comes from. Oh, that makes sense. So the sun counteracts that, which is why so many of these solar flares end up causing glitches in the matrix. And we've been seeing quite a lot of them. I had um, some in my own house. <laughs> Did you really? Like the last week or so? Like some crazy, stupid stuff happened there where there's no explanation. I know I don't have ghosts because I clear the house. So, <laughs> and you know, I check in with other people. Like it's, it's clear. So it's not a ghost thing. And it's a little bit different than a ghost thing. So like yeah. I had this one, it's just weird stuff. It's like some things could have been like a, uh, like a Mandela effect, like a personal shift of universes or parallel universes. It could have been that or parallel lives. But I had like one soda in the, we have sodas on the top shelf and one just froze and exploded in the, in the refrigerator. And so I thought, okay, you guys cannot put sodas in the freezer and forget about it and then put them back in the fridge. Like that's not, and they're like, I didn't do it. <laughs> and then I looked in the refrigerator and it, they didn't do it because it froze inside the refrigerator. So I was like, okay, well, there, this must be where the freezer <laughs> is like blowing air. There was no air. And we have, a, there's a soda in that spot always. And it's never happened before. That was just one super weird thing. And then some other things happened where I, well, it had to be like a parallel life or timeline shift where things were just different. And I was, th but it happened in the last two weeks. And so I was thinking it might be related to this. Last night, one of my friends sent me a video freaking out. She lives in Atlantic City in New Jersey. And she, she recorded two people that were crossing a crosswalk from opposite directions. They both froze mid-step. Whoa. So we've seen these uh, matrix glitches with like birds yeah. and things like that. Birds are doing it a lot. I saw one with a bird that was literally hanging midair. It wasn't soaring. It was That's its wings were like in it. It was closed. Like the wings were were down, not up. So it wasn't soaring. And it was just frozen like that. And you then there was another video I saw. No, oh, the video. A video. There, yeah, there's a lot of videos. I mean, like, but yeah, knock the one, it with a broom? <laughs> And it flies yeah. off. Have you seen that? I saw one with chickens. There were like 12 chickens that were standing around. And one of them was like mid-step and it didn't move for like three to four minutes. And then I saw another one this morning that somebody sent me where yesterday there was a bunch of birds. Like a whole flock of birds that were on the ground. And they weren't like one of them was knocked over, but all of them were just frozen in space. Like they didn't move. Like, My friend, like, the guy was of... walking up to it like he was going to squish one, and it didn't move either. And he was like, what the hell? So crazy. My friend saw one on the other side of the glass. She was sitting in her house, and on the other side of the glass, a hummingbird came to the feeder, and then it just froze. Like, and she was, like, blinking. And there was <laughs> one with an happening. airplane, too. I saw an airplane a in few weeks airplane. ago that was flying over a bridge, and then the airplane just froze. It was, I mean, and it was a video. Like, there, there was another plane going by it. And you can see that the other plane is just not moving. It's just frozen completely in, in space. And they tried to say that it was, it was on the news too, a few weeks ago. And they were like, oh, it was just a, you know, it was, uh, what do they call it? Um, an illusion brought on by the camera and the placement of the camera and the, you know, all this stuff. So they're trying to downplay all of these glitches, but that's why these glitches are happening. It's because the, the, the 3D matrix, the artificial one anyway, that's been superimposed on top of the one that we would normally have, um, is fizzing out, I think. 
I think it's starting to fall it's apart. That's this due date. <laughs> it is. It's expiring. <laughs> it's gone bad. <laughs> Throw it out. Yes. <laughs> we have two, two, two people watching right now, by the oh, way. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Laura, the, when I was on your show in January and we uh, were talking to Merlin, I took a 20 minute part of that and put it in my podcast today and it came out today. So. I've tagged you all over the universe or will be for the rest of the day. in the next two weeks. You'll be if you guys want to watch there, I'll tag. Is it in your 3D, 5D daily? Is it? No, it is in, well, it's on anywhere that podcasts are, but it's also youtube.com forward slash soundwaves heal. And I just started streaming there too. Here, I can put it in the comments. Let's see. So, yeah. I ha but my podcast is everywhere. Cool. ID channels and chats with Rachel Chamness. Yeah. There you go, guys. There's another one. Yeah. And uh, so you're on there. And I'm excited about the new the new title. I'm, I'll put that. I was just about to, like, paste that into my newsletter for you because I was already talking about you <laughs> <laughs> and saying how much I love coming on your show. So Aww, what, thank great, you. I love having you, you here jump on today <laughs> well it's an exciting day and everything happens as it's meant to you know that's why i don't stress about any of this stuff i just wing it as i go okay you gotta, gotta <laughs> change something that's fine you know so i uh apparently we were meant to hear a message from you about this so. eclipse then. <laughs> i don't know it's just about to i mean i think it's alpar i want to talk to Ooh. yeah I just keep thinking about the blue flying alien. over my house is right now. Very loud one. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Very loud, very low flying helicopter just went over my house. Okay. <laughs> I'm writing a chapter. I'm in a collaboration for a book about meeting ETs. And my chapter's on this blue avian that I met once, but it's not Alpar. And uh, so I think I have blue avians on the brain. Nice. That's what I've been writing lately, so it's kind of exciting. Huh? Thank you, Brooke. Yeah. And I love Merlin, too. I'm wearing all my Merlinite today. This is all Merlinite. Oh, yeah, got on. <laughs> all, like, Merlin, 100% on my channel. Like, it's Merlin everything. <laughs> oh, I love Merlin. He's he's one of the main characters in the book I'm writing, actually. He's one of the main mentors. Oh, I want to read it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh, that's great. great. Cool. The other the other mentor is Nikola Tesla. They went back in time and snatched him and brought him into modern times. <laughs> Have you seen Time Traveling Bong? <laughs> no, I haven't, but apparently I need to. It's so bad. It's good. It's so bad it's good. I watched some, it's good. some of the first one. I was like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Well, you want me to Let's ask him some questions like, should we stay inside? Should we should go outside? Should we care? Is it, I'm one of the things I'm really curious about is, is it truly dangerous to look at the eclipse? I'm, I'm a big really sun curious. Gazer. I love sun gazing. So I'm wondering, like, if it's going to be one of those things where maybe they are telling the truth and it is kind of dangerous, or maybe they're full of shit like they always are. But yeah. it's hard to tell. But I mean, <laughs> I don't want to burn my eyeballs out finding out. <laughs> no, I agree. That's why I'm like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll have a few peeks. <laughs> Just to see how hey, it look, goes. JC, are you saying, is Resident Alien back on? Because in that first season, remember when he goes to the, the alien, a thon or whatever con, and he's like talking about all the aliens, talking shit about them all. And then they go blue aliens. Oh no, they're really super nice. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> blue aliens. <laughs> the octopus really hit me you know where you have the sushi restaurant and there's an octopus so you did watch it <laughs> yeah and the octopus talks and was like hello cousin <laughs> oh my gosh i love it so much that is the funniest yeah. show but i hate i hate how they put the grays under the bus but that's the agenda what can well, you do you know what's funny is the other day this is the crazy right so i we removed a level three off of somebody and so I have been curious, like, what is, what level three is it? And level threes are extraterrestrials. So we're like, okay, like, what, what was it? You know, I'm thinking it was a Lizzie or something. No, it was an octopus. <gasps> a 4D octopus? It was, it was so... a 4D octopus. Is this different than the kind that, like, the mm -hmm. lower level kinds? They're, like, all yes, inky and... 
leave their Well, you know how we have 3D reptiles that like crocodiles that are technically reptilians, but they are more of an animalistic version of a reptilian. They're still reptilians. They're still related. They still have a very close familial connection. And so same thing. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah octopus are <laughs> very galactic. They tell me. People are always asking me about, you know, because I do a lot of elemental stuff at my deck and also writing a book. And uh, people always ask me, are octopus? Are they elemental? No, they are galactical. Very, 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 very. Mm -hmm. we, we can tell everybody jokes about an octopi being aliens, you know? They're they like, yeah, are. <laughs> but I mean, so are whales. And <laughs> Everything is technically Older. not from Earth. It's yeah. just that some <laughs> things tend to be more galactic looking than others and their intelligence level and in the show like it was funny how they were talking to it like it's a, like they're related they, like hello cousin you know like they're, <laughs> I loved the it. octopus is like you know are, are you gonna kill them all like <laughs> yeah even dogs but that's the funny thing is that we don't realize what we consider to be animals are not animals in the, right they're, so they're, they're, they're other animals. avatars yeah. Elemental. Anyway, every single thing here was either made for this planet or brought in. And they are always bringing in new stuff. And that's why it's like, oh, we found a new, there was a new, um, you know, fish. These are new. They must have just evolved. <laughs> they just evolved from a spaceship. They're like, hey, let's see if this lives. <laughs> what well, else some, some beings just don't care about being intergalactic. They don't care about, you know, traveling the cosmos. There's a lot of very powerful beings that just say, what's the point? We're happy where we are. They don't want to be interstellar. They have no interest in being interstellar. And that's a good because point. Because they have many of them are so intelligent and have such big brains and abilities, they can travel interdimensionally if they wish to. Well, the ocean is beautiful, so I can see why they might want to stay there. Maybe we have really delicious fish. I think so. <laughs> I eat fish. <laughs> okay. Thing, you know, everything is alive and yeah. something to teach us. That's right. <laughs> Even the fish. <laughs> That's so if you got a, a message, who wants to connect today? I think it's Alpar being the, my blue avian helper. Wonderful. Okay. What's that noise? I don't know. I just heard it. It sounded like water or something. We're talking about octopi and now there's weird <laughs> weird stuff. <laughs> Must be my neighbor. It's weird. He was just here, helped me uh, bring huge sheets of flooring upstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Never adulting never ends. I know, right? I went redoing the bathroom upstairs. Okay, so. I am Alpar. I am here. Hello. Hello. It is good to see you again. It is very good to see you again. Thank you for joining us today. Do you have a message for the collective? There are many outcomes for today and you may see something different than others. But you may trust in what you see and experience. But there are many levels of ascension happening and people are in different levels or it's not like a race or an accomplishment. It is just a different levels of the reality in which you are in. And so you may see something collectively together that others don't see which may be confusing when it is all brought to light on this wide web that you experience. And so we just say, believe what you have seen. There may be nothing and there may be something. 
or you may just experience awe and all the different things you see online. And of course, it is now hard to believe anything you see because of AI. However, most of what you will see is true. Thank you for that. Is there any way that we should be preparing ourselves or conducting ourselves today for this energy change? You may go outside if you wish. I don't believe that you will see enough with your naked eye to look at the sun. But you will feel the energy change. Your sun brings you a great deal of light and it's more than light and health. It is the sustenance of who you are and without the sun, you may feel a dip in mood even of the collective. If you stand outside, I would suggest that you place yourself in a, an egg of light. Imagine it as a violet colored shield around you. And this is for random energies which can pass at this time and also the some random space energies that the sun normally protects you from. If you wish to stay inside, you may, but you do not need to. It is not necessary. It is only a native tradition because of incorrect information or other beliefs that they have and it won't hurt you. So you may experience it if you wish. Thank you for that. And what could you think we may um, benefit from this eclipse that the energies are going to shift in a positive way? We will all benefit, us and you. It is a great change. It marks a time of change more than physically changing anything. It is a, it is marked as a time where you begin to be rapidly ascending. And so that is why there is so much happening to try and lower the frequency. However, you have helpers. You have helpers in the sky many of us, and they will never be successful. And here we can intervene because they are also not obeying the rules of the Galactic Federation. Therefore, we can intervene. There is some that we will allow to help wake the masses. So many will awake. There will be much unexplained phenomenon. As I said, many will see different things. And so you will have so many different eyewitnesses and stories enough to wake many. And the shift in the energy will awaken them as well. You will find a new influx of new beginners in the spiritual path coming. More often now, you will see a great change between now and next year. You will look back and really see the difference by then, by January. You will see how the world has changed. The world as you know it, Earth. Wonderful. Will we be able to connect more with our galactic family, such as yourselves, soon? Yes, yes, that is high on our agenda of help. 
you will all be more easily connected to your helpers, to your galactic friends as well, and your, your angels and guides, those who are tasked with helping you in your life, but also your helpers such as I. Thank you. Do you have any suggestions for how we can connect and how one of the things you can recommend for today for maybe meditating or something? If you would meditate before the eclipse begins, this would be a very good time. And bring your energy into your Hara line, the line that goes down from above your head, down through your body in the middle, and down below, connecting you from your higher soul chakra to your lower new earth chakra, whatever words you use. This one uses soul star chakra and earth star chakra. And bring your energy into this line. Place your hand on your heart and feel the light there grow and grow and encompass your auric field. And remind yourself to trust deeply into to your guides, to the universe, and that you are open to receive any messages coming to you and you will receive them and anything you need to know for today, you will receive. Wonderful, thank you so much. I am very pleased to help. We are very grateful for the help. Is there anything else you can Do drink water and stay hydrated. You may find you are tired and you must rest this week. You will find that your last week may have been difficult. This is true across the board of those who are releasing negative traits and energy from their field. It is almost a dumping as you are releasing things that do not serve as you become lighter and are able to bring yourself to a higher dimension. And you can do this in any spiritual way, healing others, healing yourself, channeling in any way that feels right to you, meditation, sound healing, all the different things, even sitting in a room with others like yourself, other light workers and spiritual seekers, you will raise the vibration of all. Wonderful. That is the perfect message for today. You've given us uh, quite a bit of confidence with what is coming, so thank you. There's been a lot of fear out there about this, so this is so very comforting to hear. Yes, do not worry. You have many helpers. Yes, thank you. And thank you for being one of those helpers, Alpar. I am pleased to be. We look forward to interacting with you more in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys, good juju is coming. <laughs> it was hard to connect. It was weird. He couldn't find the, I was like so far down. He couldn't find my words. <laughs> that hasn't happened before. It was like the words are, and I was like, huh? <laughs> A lot of people have been nervous and scared about the eclipse, but I've only felt excitement. I have maybe felt a bit of 
anticipation, I guess, is the best way I could put it. But I've been really looking forward to this because every chance we get to make the Matrix weaker, I'm all for it. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I tried to do a CE5 on Saturday. Um, the CE5 meditation where you call out um, that you're peaceful and you want to, have you ever heard of this, the Dr. Greer thing? Which part of it? Dr. Greer, Stephen Greer has this meditation that he downloaded and it's like to uh, bring in star beings. Have you ever heard of it? It's called CE5. There's like a new yeah. movie called Connect. Uh, it's called, so I think it's called Connect, the CE5 experience or something. It's on Gaia and it's really cool what he does. And so I had uh, done this whole thing asking Alpar if this is something we can trust, if it's something we can do, can we change it? And he said, do not change it. He didn't make it up. We gave it to him like as in, you know, positive beings and it really works. So uh, I was trying to do it Saturday. That's like when you're supposed to do it. Uh, the first Saturday of the month between either at eight or if it's summer, you know, like now nine to 12. So I was trying to do it, but I was freezing. <laughs> And part of the thing you're supposed to tell them is like, um, you know, it's safe for you here because you're supposed to go out into the wilderness somewhere far away from like airports or military and do it. But I could see planes going over above and I was like on my porch. I say it's not that. easy to get away from the military when they're everywhere these days. I know. You know. And they will come if they see the spike in energy. They'll, they'll see. They'll come. Yeah, because they want they They have you know, ways of monitoring things like that. Yeah. They want to know what's, what's changing the frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. My friend's in a CE5 group and she says that's happened so many times. One time this guy came like the CIA guy and they were like totally not fooled. <laughs> and then the next time the Black Hawk um, helicopters came, but the, and this is the way that you're supposed to do to see them in person. But I was just going to try it on my porch, like more of a third eye experience because I'm a medium and um, but I was going to try it his way not my way so anyway not much happened because I didn't feel it was safe so even though I was like repeating that I was like it's not really safe for you to come here <laughs> maybe you should just send me a message but then I got too cold and I went inside so I, I, I was too impatient but I did feel that I was you know that's what I'm wondering like won't they stop it like there's hundreds of thousands of you know um, experiences that people have had that are documented where it was more than one person where ETs came in and stopped horrible things like, you know, the nuclear plant. Uh, and They haven't been able to detonate a nuke in 20 years for that reason. Yeah, they show up like Palladium. They'll still up. detonate dirty bombs like what they did with Tokyo and that underwater thing. That was totally an undet uh, what do you call it a dirty bomb they detonated underwater to cause that tsunami, but but the thing is with nukes is they cut through all frequencies. They affect 5D and all the other frequencies yeah, they do. too. It's not just 3D that's affected. So that's why the ETs came in out there and they're like, nope. You're well, not. Why would they let CERN do anything? I guess he's saying, did he say? CERN is a portal open. Is a, it opens portals. They're bringing in yeah. reinforcements. Um, I mean, they're from other outside places, outside of the, um, what do you call it, the, the bubble? Because we are in a quarantine right now. So the only way through that bubble is through portals, uh, interdimensional and technically, uh, you know, over a distance. But then you also have the effect of the, um, the portals they are opening here on Earth to the astral. Uh, because a lot of what this is part of the reason why things have gotten the way they have is because technology opens portals everywhere. So it didn't used to, they didn't have a lot of access to our dimension before. You have to be in a very low vibe place. Um, this is why a lot of entities, when they get a hold of somebody, like when they're a walk in, for example, they start doing, committing mass atrocities and things to lower the vibe of a certain area because those will open portals in that area. This is why. People that when, for example, um, they convert a building, let's say they convert a building we saw with a prison that was converted into a school in South Africa that holds all of that energy of the prison mm -hmm. inside the school. And it, I mean, there's a lot of energy that has been basically manipulated through these astral portals where they keep the frequency low. So by going in and closing those portals, one, the entities don't have access to that space anymore. Because it's like a it's a place where they can come and go, 
Um, but also you don't have the low vibe energy that's just being funneled into that space. So the best thing we can do with CERN is to just visualize portals and closing them because we can do that. We can set that intention. That's true. Yeah. I hadn't thought that's about right. trying to close their portals. That's a good yeah. idea. We can totally do that. Yeah, we can totally <laughs> do that. We can call in our guides and say, hey, if there's any portals that have been opened in this neighborhood by CERN, please close them and just okay. start calling attention to those things. Because our soul guides, that's what they do is they go around closing portals for us all the that's time. That's true. Well, um, so what kind of people work at CERN? So this is what I heard, that there's a video of the last time they opened the portal. And like, oh, have you seen it? My friend saw it. And you can see what the demons the coming out of the portal. And all the people are like, what's happening? I didn't see that one. I saw a big portal open in the sky. Um, and it looked like it was, they tried to say it was some optical illusion that happened with the sun coming through the clouds. But it was quite clearly a portal opening in the clouds above it. And so, but this is what I mean. Like they, they, they're getting it so obvious. You know, they're making things so transparent just by trying to their, their backpedal, you know, with the things that they're saying and the money that they throw into these things and the it's way amazing. that they explain themselves because they can't completely lie. If they do, they have to admit some of it. Otherwise, they, they can't shirk the karma. They have to admit some of it in order to kind of brush it off on us and be like, well, you didn't do anything about it. And so it shirks karma in a way by telling yeah. us what they do. So Ariana's asking about Greer. You know, I I wasn't sure if I could trust him because he did something with a Hollywood actress. <laughs> so I, we asked Alpar and he said that we can trust Greer, but that, you know, to be wary of anyone who started in Hollywood and now is on the scene. But, um, but if, or has been in Hollywood for a long time, uh, I showed me a spiritual leader. I was kind of like, oh no. There's a lot but, of double agents out there, you know, yeah. that appear bad that are actually good and ones that appear good that are actually bad. So really it's hard to say with anybody these days. I just try to take what I can, what resonates and, you know. Me um, too. Or I ask. So if you guys want to see it, it's in my group. That's the link. If um, It's 5D daily. And um, I'm sure as well. I, uh, we asked him the questions like, can we trust Greer? Can we change the thing? Like, can we do it differently? Maybe they were trying to show me that it, I couldn't do it differently because it didn't really work. Although, uh, to be honest, I was like a good 20 minutes before I froze my butt off and went inside. So I'm still Sagittarius. I mean, you know, <laughs> fiery. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting in the bath. <laughs> This is the thing Ariana says, can we channel and ask who the bad ones are? And she says, Bashar is good for sure. But the funny thing is, <laughs> Bashar was pushing the vaccines. It was telling everybody that the C-jab was completely safe and that you should be getting it. So it's like... Well, Alpar does not agree. <laughs> no, most of my guides don't either. So this is the problem, is that, you know, there are people out there who seem to be really, really good. Yeah. And it's hard to... You can't tell. It's hard to tell. And... You know, 90% of those reels that you see are fantastic. Oh, yes, I absolutely agree, you know, but that's kind of how it works, right? They throw in so much truth. It's the same as when you watch a movie that seems totally sci-fi and you're like, why does this resonate with me so deeply? Because there's so much truth in it from your past life that you agree with. And then they oh, throw so in that thing. It's like watching Resident Alien. And you're like, oh, my God, I love this. And then they're like, the Greys are taking over the world. It's like, oh, did you? Star know? Wars is a great example of this because Star Wars is based on truth. It's it's the Tiamat yeah. Wars. It's what happened with, with the whole Tiamat thing. The destruction of the planet that and everything. Like, everything was in Star Wars is is true for the Tiamat wars i mean it's crazy oh, much, that's cool that's why people were crazy about it because they're remembering history this late in the see what i mean and my husband was definitely a galactic uh a galactic traveler a uh, in a war I, I, i've mm -hmm. seen that before so that's very interesting maybe that's why he's so crazy about it and i know one thing i know about it i didn't know that but i know that I've seen so many of those beings and I'm always like, what Star Wars? <laughs> like that tall, those tall white weird looking yeah. ones that supposedly made the 
stormtroopers. I've seen them before. They're like pretty cool, actually. The ones I've met. But one of the cool things I do believe that we are going to be experiencing is like a nulling of the old energies that are here and a shifting of, of the new frequencies that are coming in. That's what us star seeds are here for. We, yeah. you know, these new energies that are being, you know, coming into the earth, who do you think anchors those energies? We do. <laughs> so this is why you, know, like I was saying, you might be feeling tired today, guys. You might be feeling, you mm -hmm. might be getting some headaches. Um, if you start getting a headache, put a hat on. We've noticed that that actually does help. Uh, tinfoil so hat? Manhattan. Yeah, well, <laughs> it doesn't have to be tinfoil. Apparently, you can just wear a beanie or something, and it will really? actually help. Yeah, Sarah Jane Patton does that. Whenever she gets intense downloads, she gets headaches, and then she puts a hat on, and it makes the, the headaches less. So if you got, try that, drink a lot of water, like Alpar said. You know, you can ground yourself. The more ground grounded yourself. you are, the less you're going to have a stroke. It's kind of like a lightning rod, you know? It's, it's exactly what they need us to do. That's how they ground it into the earth. It's the light codes and all the lights coming through us. And if we ground, then it helps it ground. And yeah, you're going to feel better. Yeah, exactly. Laura. Are you any good at meditations? Can we do a grounding meditation for today? You are good at meditation. You do that. Yeah, I do them all the time. time. Do you want to just do one today for everybody to get grounded for these new energies that are coming in? And Sure. We can kind of prepare ourselves for what's coming. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you could even do a little song for me. A little mini, mini well, song. Yeah, no, I always use liquid Reiki. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but liquid Reiki shamanic sound healing is what I call it. But can I play my music? My music is. By the means. I just meant YouTube. <coughs> I'll try it. I do own the rights. Wait, hold on. I have to cough. <laughs> Let it all out. <laughs> yeah, get it out, girl. <laughs> that was a clearing for sure. I'm saying that's a chakra. <laughs> Expanding it. Woo. I'm going to light some good juju too, by the way. All right. I'll play my music. Can you hear it? And hopefully, mm -hmm. if YouTube's listening, I own the rights to this. I have a contract. <laughs> All right. I have a great um, composer who makes music and will give you the rights to it. His name's Josh Bergen. If you ever want, I'll give you his info. All right. So, yeah, go Perfect. for it. Everybody, light your sage. <laughs> I've got my candle. Right Get there. your crystals. My... Come grab your crystals. Mm -hmm. All right, so first just take some deep breaths, bringing in opalescent light all around you into your body to illuminate all spaces that need illumination and to light your light body. And on your exhales, releasing anything that no longer serves you. And of course, we'll call in a sacred circle, calling in Archangel Michael in the south with fire, bringing in electric blue, sapphire blue light all around your body, uh, cutting all cords, releasing all attachments, stories, and the like, and plants, anything in your field that no longer serves, turn over to Michael to be released, cords and hooks, any stories of the past, anything we need to let go of, He's using his flaming blue sword to release it from us now. Calling in the north in earth, Archangel Uriel with golden light, ruby red light, bringing that in, bringing solutions to any problems or bringing information that we need, connecting us to new earth, unplugging us from the matrix, allowing us to travel between easily with gold light, ruby red light, and in the east with Raphael and air, emerald green light coming in for healing of all the bodies, mental, physical, emotional, ethereal, all of them. And healing of the chakras, the 3D chakras. And then in the west with water, Archangel Gabriel, his diamond light dragons, his diamond white light, Illuminating all the chakras all the way up to 8D or 12D, 13D, and all the way down into the earth.
and then some liquid Reiki to help you ground and connect to your helpers. So do 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 Imagine yourself standing at the top of a stairway and it's got beautiful marble and a large banister. You can put your hand on the rail and begin to walk down as I count from five to one. Five, taking those first steps. Maybe you feel the cool marble on your feet you're feeling lighter and lighter four all the soothing sounds you hear only relax you deeper three your trust in the universe allows you to receive more information two you're so light now you're sort of floating to the bottom and one you float to the bottom and you walk through a large archway to a path through the woods. As you begin to walk through the woods, you see it all around you and you feel the dirt beneath your feet, maybe some crunch of twigs or leaves. You feel the wind in your hair and you can take deep lungfuls of fresh, cool air Perhaps you hear the birds twittering. As you're walking through the forest, you come to a large field of grass. And as you walk to the middle of that field, perhaps you begin to see guides or helpers, starseed helpers or spirit guides or angels appearing now or coming towards you. Or perhaps you feel them or sense them or know that they're there. For you do not need to see to receive. So perhaps you feel them come all around you and make a circle as they begin to give you some light codes for grounding deeper into the energy today, grounding deeper into the earth. You can almost feel like roots coming out from your feet and going deep, deep, deep into the earth, all the way to the new earth grid of Gaia and bringing white light back up throughout your whole body a feeling of comfort and joy, of belonging to new earth, of welcoming from Gaia. This light infuses all throughout your energy field and begins to make a figure eight going up around your crown, back down through your body, crossing over all the way back down to where you connect to earth, your earth star chakra, back up again Faster and faster, this eight of light, building your own light and helping you feel deeply grounded. And perhaps one of your guides has a message for you now. In fact, we can even ask a question. What's the best thing for me to do today with a solar eclipse?
And now we'll just ask for some final light codes, especially if for those who aren't getting a whole lot that we just feel them coming into our crown, feel them growing in our body, maybe a, a strong feeling of love, connection to your guides and your helpers. And then we'll thank them. We can also ask for a sign to know when they're near. Maybe it's a touch or a feeling or knowing. Perhaps it's a symbol of some sort, something to see. And then we'll say goodbye and begin to come back into your body and back into the room. As I count from three to one, you'll awaken further and come back, always remembering everything that happened and wake, awakening to more insight as time goes on. Three, you're coming back into the room, back into your body. Two, taking deep breaths, moving your fingers and toes, or feeling it come into your limbs, yourself, into your body. And one, wiggling a little, opening your eyes. And coming back. Super quick meditation. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You give me goosebumps whenever you sing. I love it. Oh, thank you, Laura. <laughs> it always makes me feel so good. <laughs> that was really special. And uh did I you feel enough? better? I, I feel grounded. Yeah, I did too. You know what's funny is I I was kind of you know what I had in my head when we were talking about what we should be doing during the eclipse? I saw myself basically playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> <laughs> because Aiden and I, we go to the arcade every once in a while. He loves it. And there's like this hungry hippo game that you can play. And it's all, it's kind of like whack-a-mole, but different, you know? It's like a mix of whack a hippo? Two. And I, yeah, but I was, see, it was like what I was seeing in my head. Well, it was like, what are you going to be doing during the eclipse? Well, I'm going to be playing whack-a-mole with portals and stuff like <laughs> <laughs> so thank you that was really beautiful it was oh, just what we needed yeah when i um when i asked they showed me in the front yard with my son like looking at the floor ground and using the glasses and and i was like why don't we just go in the backyard and they were like nope and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, really? That's it? You don't want me to do anything else? And they were like, no, your son needs you. So I was like, okay. So that's all I got. So if you got, if you didn't get some great message of saving the world like Laura's going to do, then it's okay too. <laughs> we got our work cut out for us. A little bit more later. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> so we've got our work cut out for us. I but know, it is I'll really important. It. Like I, I, I am feeling the importance of us grounding so that we, we can bring these energies in here. Because Me otherwise, too. if we don't ground that energy, it can turn into chaos energy a little bit. And so uh, we're very important when it comes to being just antennas even. That's yeah, why I we're so I spread out to, like in a grid. I think I need to help my son ground during the – I think that's it's important. Yeah. You know, remember how I said, like, it might just, I told my guides, like, if, if I, if things are, I should just stay home and you just change everything. They did just change everything. Even my husband's saying he's coming home early now. <laughs> so that's interesting. I would just say, ask your guides and helpers. They're like, I'm open to, you know, if I'm, I have plans to be somewhere where it's not a good idea, it's not safe, or even just highly inconvenient that you just change it for me. Yeah. Without so, glasses, you can look at the ground. I mean, it seemed like Alpar was saying you could look at the sun, but I don't want to be the one to say, go ahead and look at the sun and burn out your eyes. I don't know. <laughs> Is it programming? Is it true? I, mean, I don't know. I sun gaze all the time. Like one of my favorite things to do in the morning and evening is sun gazing. I uh, I love the vibe of it. So I feel yeah. like I, if you're kind of used to it, I don't think it's going to be as, as much of an effect on those that are, you know, always outside wearing sunglasses and stuff, like not acclimating to those, uh, you know. But then again, you're right. You don't really want to be the one out there going, oh, same girl. 
guys yeah. where they're like, oh, well, guess what? I can't see properly afterwards. So, yeah, right. who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I might take a, a peek. <laughs> I wonder if we even have, yeah, it's completely overcast here. It's, it's completely it's overcast really here. Too. Yeah, we won't. Be and Alfar was saying anyway. you're not going to see anything from gazing at this. Like, you're, there's not going to be any big like snakes coming out of the sky or anything. Ramp up and get exciting. Like, because it does make you think. Like, what do they want you to see? But you know, more like what's being buried in the news, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, there is that interesting video from um, the Pleiadians. If you guys are interested, I'll copy it again and share it. They did a video about the eclipse. They explained about what they were doing with those rockets and all of that. So there's the link for those of you okay, who are interested. You. It's on it's on Svaru Official, the one with Marie. Um, she talked about it four days ago. So if you guys go on there, you'll find it. You can always look at the ground. You know, the shadows are really a fun part. They, um, Alpar showed me that part, you know, where you look at where all this, all the leaves and everything looks like moons. That's kind of cool. In Africa, we just pour the water into a basin and watch it from the water. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how we do it in Africa. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, I say we because I lived there for so long. But yeah, you know, that's how it's. The, the poor man's uh, I was going to say, well, in America, they just sell you something. Here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did actually get a pair of those glasses because they were giving them out, and I got a pair, and I went to put them on, and they're I literally, there's it's like this. There's, it's, it's like, <laughs> you can't see through them at all. I don't even know what the really? point is. Okay, I'll use, the, I'll, I'll use the, uh, some water. Yeah, I'm getting some from the school. They're like, we'll give you an extra pair. So they bought some for yeah. students. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah. And they were so like, let the kids wanna, watch it. They were like, if you want to pick up your kids early, you can. Whatever. You know, if they're little, we're not going to let them do it because, you know, they don't want to be in charge of little kids, trying to make a 20 little kids look through glasses. So, <laughs> but my kid's not little. So oh, I actually have a good piece of, um, Oh, what is it called? It's not the selenite. It's the satin spar that they use for um, for traveling with the Vikings used. Because, you know, what they they would hold a piece up. and It's, it's flat and thin. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a, you hold it up to the sky. You can actually see the sun through the clouds. That's oh, how really? they used to navigate when it was foggy. Really? That's yeah, so cool. So, so maybe I'll use my satin spar and do it that That's way. That's a good idea. Yeah, Sunstone. That's the one. That's the one it's called. Yeah, Michelle. That's the one I was thinking of. I do have a piece. That's interesting. Structure some water with the eclipse. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they said that this is one of the things they explained in that video about the eclipse is that this is when the, the matrix is going to be at its absolute weakest. Um, because no. whenever there's a full moon, whenever there's a full moon, the matrix is at its strongest. Whenever there is at a new moon, it's at its weakest. And the new moon is happening at the same time, the exact same time as the eclipse. Oh. So this sun is going to be basically neutralizing the matrix even further during that time. So the veil will thin, but the veil is, you know, it's going to stay thin, but it's going to be at its absolute thinnest during this eclipse. Well, that's cool. I wonder what Alpar was talking about then, about the, just put yourself in a, like a little egg shield of loose energies. Yeah. Yes. Because it is. It, eclipse energy is kind of chaos energy. So I can understand why he was yeah. like, it's, it's a good thing, but you still want to be protected just in case. Because you are egg. anchoring some very powerful energies for, for the collective. Yeah. Maybe it's the CERN stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's, yeah. well, we'll see what happens. I may mean, have a feeling that. You know, it's going to be an interesting week. I'm definitely planning to do some Ascension stuff later. <laughs> oh, yeah? Do tell. You got some stuff coming up. Well, Feel actually, to, to I it. sent you a message to see if you wanted to do it with me. <laughs> oh, okay. When did, when did you message me? <laughs> was it on Last weekend? Day. I don't know if you saw it. So um, no, I go live on my... Pure chaos. I didn't get a chance this morning to, to go through my messages. But, yeah, I'm down. Okay, well, on 5D Daily, I go live every Thursday. It's short, like 20, 30 minutes at noon EST if you're free. I thought we could just sure. 
talky talky because you're on my you're on my podcast this week, but Yay. I didn't get to talk about you too much. So why don't you come on and talk about you? That'll be awesome. Looking okay. forward to it. All right, cool. cool. Well, then and you we guys can talk about some of the, whatever happened on the eclipse as well, because I'm sure there's going to yeah. be something going on that's interesting today. I think that it's a good time to do ascension energies and maybe, you know, whatever gets get some information too, you know. Yeah. So, and you can talk about your new name too. That would be good. Yes, the Astara community. I love the new mm -hmm. name. I, I love it too. I really do. I'm, I'm into Isis right now. I've got my Isis earrings on today. And they say that Astara is another version of Isis. I'm oh, like, really? Yeah. Oh, how cool. Astara, Inanna. Um, there's a whole bunch of different names. Isis has got tons of different names. That's true, yeah. I love to try to find, like, which goddess in this culture and this one is the same, you know? Um, yep. They don't always, though. Like, Yemaya and Gaia are not the same. <laughs> yes, yes. She's like, yes, no. Keisha Ishtar is another one of her names. And I do believe oh, she yeah, was Tegetan. I, I do believe Isis was actually Tegetan. It's a long story. She They, they didn't really... This is the thing, right? Is that they're kind of, I think they're kind of embarrassed a little bit um, because they they did say that Zeus, for example, was also a real person, that he was a Tegetan, and that some of their explorers haven't exactly been the best um, ambassadors that they could have been when they came here. They've been kind of taking advantage of some, you know, nobody's perfect. No civilization out there is. 100% right. benevolent. You're going to have some rogues out there that do some naughty shit that like taking advantage of situations. And when you are basically a deity compared to other races that are very similar looking to you, of course, there's going to be beings that take advantage of that. So, but many of them are, you know, um, very powerful and are still powerful in other realms and affecting us to this day. I mean, even though Isis was around 5,000 years ago, it's entirely possible she's still alive to this day because they live thousands of years. Oh, that's an interesting thought that she's almost like a star being, not like a in spirit. That's always my big well, they, question. Like, are you in spirit? Are you in, are you incarnated as something? It's hard to tell because they're it's both. It's really complicated. <laughs> that's my biggest questions lately. Like, I need mm. to know more about what's spirit versus incarnation. <laughs> yeah but this is why i think many of them are are here to kind of change the world and the, one of the things that they get and said about uh ishtar isis is that she was very much um active in trying to bring down the matrix itself nice that that she was basically um a rebel <laughs> and that's something that i resonate with quite a lot so that's part of the reason why i named the new well, we named it after her um, so that way we are, we are also here to kind of shake things up and, and collapse the matrix. Yeah. Um, Lisa, I put in the link, it'll be on my, in my Facebook group and she's on my I podcast mean, today. So you can find her on my, on my podcast, 5D channels and chats here. I'll write it and then you can. There it is on the link as well, guys. There's 5D daily. There's the link for it. If you guys want to join Rachel's group. And you can find that on YouTube if you want. So I'll give you the YouTube, but it's definitely like anywhere that there's podcasts. Oh, I can't type. Okay. She's on there today. And then she'll be in my group, which is 5G Daily on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Say, Thank you. Yes. Yeah, they're saying it's a great group. I love the group as well. <laughs> it's fun. I like it. This is the best thing about these collectives, you know? We're all kind of looking out for each other in these groups. We're we're helping each other in many different ways and we are um, you know, uplifting the collective. Yeah, that I find that really helps people. And then we can we can uh answer questions too, which is great for when people have questions. Perfect. Like it like you do here. I think that's really great. This is the thing, you know, we're all kind of walking each other through this mess. <laughs> you know, yeah. All star seeds, we're all spread out in a grid because we are anchoring these frequencies, but we're also very well connected online. And so it's a, 
it's a really a, a blessing to be here with all of you and especially today thank you so much for for joining us rachel and for sure, thank being you. part of this community <laughs> you're so helpful and supportive well, i just love you to bit thank you i'm glad you can't see all the powder on me from lowe's <laughs> I was like, hold on one second. I didn't even brush my hair. Oh, I love Good morning. It. Thank you, Daniela. So oh, Loy yeah. is going to be going live today. Loy is going to be doing some readings. Do we have time to pull a card real quick? Sure. Can we, can we pull a card for the collective before we go? Sure. So Loy is also going to be doing some readings, and she's going to be talking today in the star in the community. So that'll be magical, uh, mindful magical Mondays, and that will be at 1:11 p.m. EST today. So make sure that you join Loy. Loy will also be on the podcast Thursday, so we'll get to hang out with Loy a little bit this week. Lisa you know, asked, "Is it fairy dust, Rachel?" What? That <laughs> you said you're covered in dust. You said, "Is it fairy dust?" Absolutely sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> So I'll pick one from my deck since it's speaking of fairy dust, <laughs> since it's right behind me. Elemental magic and manifestation. You can, There's Rachel's deck. I'm at soundwavesheal.com if you want to forward slash fay oracle if you want to look at that deck. Anyway, okay, let's pick a card. What do we need to know for today? Yes. <laughs> do you know how many times I've pulled this card for people in the past two weeks? Observe your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Your that's thoughts create tiny. our reality. So it's that's a fairy, Tristan. tiny little Tristan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's a daisy fairy, so she's really tiny. Nice. I can't get it to focus, but yeah, observe your thoughts. Of course. So this is also a huge manifesting time. So really watch that you're manifesting something good and not thinking of like worst case scenario, fear, anything like that. You want to observe your thoughts and make sure that they're what you want to manifest. So if you're trying to manifest something, today's a really great day to think about what it feels like. If you were to have that thing you're trying to manifest, the feeling of it, the victory of it, the yay, the gratitude of it, and then... Um, that will be very good instead of thinking like, is the world going to fall apart? Don't let's because, you know, some of this fear is so that the collective will think of some terrible outcome and and bring it. So to well, keep from bringing it. the other day, that's for sure. <laughs> what did you say? The earthquake didn't help that we had here in the East Coast either. Mm -hmm. because <laughs> I've had so many muggles that messaged me. Some of my friends from New Jersey that I used to live there by have messaged me going, you know, I didn't think anything about this eclipse until that earthquake. And now they're all like. <laughs> yeah, right. I think there'll be other things. Yeah. That are going to wake people up a great deal. That's what Alpar said, too. He told me that last week, too. I'd forgotten he said that. So that's cool. Yeah. We're going through changes and so is Mother Gaia. Yeah. I feel like real excitement from Gaia. Like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Yeah, Taiwan. Well, she's had been one. kind of in a funk for thirteen thousand years ever since they put this, <laughs> this quarantine on us. So yeah, it's like it's not only us that are going to benefit from this. I, I really believe that the Earth is going to benefit too, and and she really needs it. I hope we see our friends <laughs> in the skies. Yeah, that's honestly that's the one thing in all of this that I'm trying to manifest the most. I wanna just want to connect with our star families again. Like they have no right to stop us. I know. We have, we're the boots on the ground, you know, like they have no right to stop us from speaking to our star families and connecting with them on a that's right. deeper level. It'd so be great gonna, let's all happens. manifest that, guys, that we get to talk to the Tegetans face to face soon. That would be nice. Right. And that all they the just others come down and, and tell CERN, nope, this isn't going to work today. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we broke it. <laughs> Well, they did say, you know, it's on its last legs, this artificial matrix. And so if that collapses, then we're going to be able to access a lot more of our abilities very quickly. So it, it is important to start manifesting properly by thinking positive thoughts now, because it's you don't want to start manifesting the opposite, which is what they're yeah. trying to do. With That's all what this they're trying to do. Time. They're just trying to get us to manifest it. But we're not going to play. No. no, we're not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for today, okay, Rachel. This was perfect. Me. What a serendipitous conversation this turned out to be. Everything happens as it's meant to. It's so great because, you know, you're on my podcast. So everybody watching, 
Was... Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm excited about Thursday. I'm glad you can make it. Cool. Thursday is going to be awesome. Absolutely. I'll share the link so you guys can join us on Thursday. We'll set it as a reminder. And uh, make sure that you guys are drinking a lot of water today. Remember, that's what Alpar suggested. Drink a lot of water, positive thoughts, ban the spammers, block. <laughs> oh see, my they're gosh. gonna be trying they're gonna test the fences today guys we're gonna have to oh my God. you see <laughs> so vigilant. yes definitely okay thanks thanks lauren Mwah! i love you guys i hope you have a wonderful day don't forget you can sign up for my astral projection class it'll be on sunday i'm, I'm gonna be getting a whole lot of new info for this one so if you guys are able make sure that you go and check it out so I love you all. I will see you guys tomorrow. Mwah. Bye, Rachel. See you Bye. soon, guys. Bye. Bye.